Yes. All right, and the map is Baltic. I don't know which team chose this whole map, but I really don't mind. Baltic is a standard map. Every uh, experienced player should be able to, well, yes. survive at least. <laughs> um, let's go through the civilizations. We have Dark Devil here playing as the Viking Pocket for ROR, for the rulers of Rome. That is really nice. Viking Pocket is really what you want. And especially this one here, Mongol Flank. This is even better. Vikings can do both, but Mongols are so much better in a flank position. So that is Siesta in Teal. He is up against Yoshiki playing in blue as the Mongols as well, so that is even. And in the south, let's take a look. You can see El Sancho playing as the Huns in grey. And in red there is Luke as Huns. Only the pocket is missing here for clue. That would be Winds playing as Vikings. So, completely mirrored matchup. Let's take a look at the sieves. Couldn't be more equal in yes. terms of civilization distribution or player distribution here. Let's take a look at the map. Mm, maybe a little bit more land for ROR. Yes. Just their their strip of land is bigger. They can have a very nice and safe trade here between these two corners, north and east. While for Clue, this um, river or this stretch of water is really getting close to the the side here of the map. And yeah, galleys here. Or galleys in Imperial, sorry, galleons in Imperial Age, they could really uh, take out a lot of trade here. So that is um, something to keep in mind later on. But usually Baltic games get decided in uh, early Feudal Age. Let me just mute the sounds. Um, but I'll still keep a, an eye on. Uh, on the chat because there are some other good players. Optilaser for example um, is a, another 1850 or maybe 1900 player so let's see what they have to say. And they are teammates obviously so they know the players much better than me. Let me just go back to the chat so I can uh, keep an eye on this. What else is there to look at? It is unlikely, but if Clue would go for a land rush, then I think Red would have a hard time defending all the golds in the front, but well, one in the back, that's fine. One stone in the back, the berries could be harassed. Dock coming up there, front dock, but on Baltic it's doesn't make a big difference. Few tiles to the south, few tiles to the north, not a big deal. Also the fish is usually always good on Baltic, so nothing to worry about. question from the chat about AOT. Um, I think it's always a good idea to look for the RTS League on Facebook. They are very active um, with their updates there. Yeah, it looks like a regular start from all players. Doc is already up for blue. Now just finished for teal. Then uh, in purple winds. Mm. 
Yeah, everyone going water by the looks. No surprises so far. Sorry, I just touched my phone. Hope it won't go off when I'm streaming. Oh, and this palisade wall here did not get up. Does Yoshiki just want to wall more to the front? Mm -hmm. And Blue is saying he's, he's GG. Ah, can't be. The scout here from Siesta is really low, only 9 HP left, so I could take him out if he gets to him. Wall coming up from red as well. And now this scout here is trapped because grey is walled up already, so no problem. First players are clicking up. Dark Devil with population 27. Let's check the Mongols maybe. They should be the ones going up first. Siesta, hmm, kind of late for a Mongol. Population 26, so not ultra aggressive. Yeah, just needs to deal with the wolf there. Nothing special. And then the other Mongol would be Blue here, Yoshiki. Also kind of laid up. Well, he said that he had problems. Population 25, 26 now, and he's up 42%. Then wins. Let's take a look. A lot of chat going on. Maybe there was a pause. Yes, there is a pause and the players used the time to chat a little. Let's see what Blue is saying. First I lost a scout, then a villager, then the boar ran back if I get that right. So yeah, not a great start for Blue at all. Oh yeah, we can see the dead villager here, I think, under the TC. So the last remainings are, yeah, remainders of the body. Okay, uh, red is up. Two dogs, third one coming up. Two galleys out already. Let's compare that to his opponent. Also two dogs. Third one coming up, but where are the galleys? Does he have any out yet? Doesn't seem so, at least. His land can actually be harassed from the water. This gold here later on, the berry is definitely the uh, main gold here later on, when the ships get more range. Okay, now, between the Mongols, Where are the teal galleys? I don't I don't see teal getting any galleys. Blue had such a a bad start and now he is the one killing fishing ships. Second dog coming up. Yeah, I mean by this time 13 minutes he should have three dogs and now he's just getting the second one. So I really wonder what uh, Siesta is doing there. Population 34. Saving his fishing ships now. Oh, that's the plan. Look at that. He's not going galleys at all. Maybe he was just fake crushing. Give his opponent a bait there. And now there are some docks. The capacity for transport ships early on is um, 5. Why did he just garrison four? No idea. Anyway, he's there now with four scouts and blue. Does not seem to 
to know. Purple lost his scout there, he should have told Blue immediately, so not the best communication there. There he said something. No, he said he killed the fish from Teal, but that is not so important as the scouts killing all the villagers right now. Fast war coming up. More scouts landed. Can he run around in time? Nope, probably not. And barracks is coming up. Meanwhile, on the water, obviously, Blue needs to fight the pocket now, because Teal just has nothing on the water. He's going for land. Okay, yeah. How is the, um, the purple pocket doing? That would be wins. Let's take a quick look. 52 population. Comparing that to green, who is on 50, so rather similar. Let's check the army counts. 15 ships on the water and Dark Devil has 11, so more ships there for purple. Also gray is with him. That is good coordination there, you should always fight together, especially on water. Let's see if these scouts can do more damage. Nope. Spearmen out already. Nope. Another snipe. Picked up a villager. I think the villager cut through here. There is a hole in this wall now. Yep, must have cut down a tree. Two more villagers running around. Yep. Should see them by now. Also this one. Now yeah, they're close to the town center though. Here is one, and with Mongol line of sight, he should be able to see this vill. Nope, moving on. Uh, purple has mini walled his resources with palisades. He's rather safe. Quite a few scouts now. Let's take a look at Siesta. He has seven cavalry on the map. Okay. And now red and green I need to defend against gray and purple. Good shot there. Yeah, purple losing a few galleys there. And purple even saying GB there, so even with higher numbers, the micro here was really nice from ROR, from Dark Devil and Luke. Let's check the uptimes. Siesta is up by 20%. Dark Devil... Oh, 85% now already. Then Luke is on... No, not up yet, but he, he could click up. Yes, and he just did. Population 65, so that looks good. His direct opponent, Sancho... 10%, so maybe a few seconds faster. Yoshiki on 48. Obviously that hurt him economy-wise here to get the barracks and all the spearmen out. And the scouts ran all the way over to Grey. Smart play there from uh, from Siesta. If well, I can't do damage to blue or purple, let's just move on. And Grey is swearing a lot in the chat now. <laughs> Siesta's obviously happy, saying GG, <laughs> ending the game. Maybe not yet, but it was a good strike there. A very good one. <laughs> He's saying uh, I killed 10 vills. It was probably less, but very, very good, good snipe there. And Grey is off from gold, obviously, if you want to fight on the water. Um, gold is crucial, so this is gonna set back Grey Lord. Barracks coming up, yeah, of course, then this barracks costs 175 wood, the spearmen cost food and wood, so not gonna help with the battle on the water. 
And it looks like it's paying off. Two players here are basically beating three players on the water. Another landing, two rangers are out. This wall here did not go up, so he can just walk around and that's that's what he's doing. Should be careful with this will. He can dodge the arrows, yes. The scouts got upgraded to light cavalry and now graze force to to stone wall. This game is really entertaining, not a boring all water matchup. I mean of course it takes a lot of micro and usually the uh, better player wins, but this is way more entertaining. And red is really trapping grey here, there's no way to get out of there anymore. Purple is still killing a few ships, so it's not completely decided yet. Though the team score is 2800, almost 2900, against um, 2200, so clear advantage for um, the clue team here from Mexico. Uh, sorry, Siesta is confusing me. For the ROR team, and Clue is behind. Damn Siesta. Um, purple. And that's a good fight now against Red, and it's this, this river here stretching into the land, so Red cannot get out, he will lose everything. But anyway, he killed. I think everything from grey before, so it's just a trade-off. And now these mini walls here will not help anymore against ranged units. Some skirmishers out, but they're going into the wrong direction. Okay, yeah. Showdown on the water now. Pretty much only purple and green have ships left. Let's see how this is gonna turn out. Green forced to retreat. He has less units there right now. Needs to reinforce quick. He has four dogs, five dogs. Let's see if that is enough. He is still um, way ahead in score. Let's check the updates. He has plus one defense, so careening has been researched. He can fight with less units against more. And now red is joining as well, while grey... I don't see anything from grey. Just a transport ship here in the middle of the battle. But is it likely to go down? Blue, meanwhile, defending with skirmishers. He managed to get a town center next to his gold. This stone is safe, but I can see two, three, yep, three dead villagers there. Four, five. So Teal keeps harassing Blue, and these four skirmishers there won't do much against Castle Age crossbowmen there. A landing from Grey, wow, did that transport ship get anywhere? Well, Teal at least has a stable, and he should be able to pick up these villagers. There's an archery range coming down.
Winds is saying it's GG on the water. Blue apologizing, sorry. <laughs> sorry girls, to be exact. Very, very well played. Cool strategy from a ROR here, I think. With the landing from the Mongol. Again, I was expecting a, an earlier fuel age with early galleys, but yeah, he landed with scouts and did damage everywhere, and now he transported more villagers over, got the archers out, you now the siege workshop. And on uh, on water, blue did yeah was not able to add much more. So the brief three versus two turned into a two versus two, and green and red managed to win it. Probably also because of the harassment. I mean, purple managed to wall most of his economy, but gray was hit hard there by the scouts and light cavalry later on. Yeah, there's units everywhere. Hmm. Purple is saying they don't have fish. I wonder why. There's still quite some, some fish left. But yeah, maybe not many fishing ships are out. Three there for teal, four for green. But quite a few for red, so it's not entirely true. Mm, this light cavalry was on a passive stance or something. Now blue managed to destroy this. Manganel killed all the archers. Looks like Teal didn't look after after his units there. Okay, it looks like Winds wants to sling uh, Grey now. So from Vikings to Huns. That sounds like a plan. For now, they are walling up just to save some time. Maybe I should check if Green is slinging and doing the same. Let's take a look. He is an Imperial Age. Oh, yeah. This landing here from Grey, we've seen it earlier. I thought Teal would be able to uh, deny that, but he just didn't. Again, communication. Green was definitely chasing the transport ship there. She just didn't tell him. Yeah, well, more Kefarchas out now for Grey. These Hans Kefarchas are pesky and not easy to kill. And yeah, Green and Red are using their water dominance now. And Dark Devil just started slinging to um, Siesta, interestingly enough. So they're slinging the Mongol, not so much the Hun player, again interesting, not doing the same here, our two teams. Yeah, 
Yeah, he keeps slinging to see us another single tribute to uh, uh, Luke, so looking very good. That is consistent at least. Let's go back to wins. And he is slinging to Yoshiki now. Also to the Mongol. Did he change his mind? Or did I just get it wrong that they wa he wanted to sling uh, anyway? But I saw that he was giving resources to uh, to Grey as well. Hmm. Maybe I've missed something. Anyway, Mongols receiving a sling from their pockets now. Let's see who will be up in uh, Imperial first. Because with Mongols it's always a fight for castles, right? To get out the Mangu dice. So, Yoshiki is up in Imperial by 70%. And Siesta is an Imperial already, so he can get trebuchets. Elite Mangudai was just finished. Come on, is he getting trebuchets or not? I think he should get them as soon as possible. And these Mangonels... Hmm. He's wasting Mangudai there, shooting at a palisade while uh, Skirms are taking them out. On the other side, Red wants to do something. He just cracked through the wall. Oh wow, he is in and Grey is pretty much defenseless. Eight thousand score roughly for Red and four thousand eight hundred for Grey, so he has a big advantage. I don't see how they're gonna stop this. People are saying Siesta is getting wrecked, but I think it's it's fine. I don't see any trebuchets yet taking out his castles or anything, so he can hold for sure while Grey is losing pretty much everything there. Heavy cavalry archers, cap rams. Still some raiding from Grey. Yeah, but Siesta has some knights. Trade is up. Luke at least has some units. Ooh, and now Red is in the trade line. So if if Clue had any trade, that would be bad. Right now he's just just right in inverted commas killing villagers. That is just as bad. There's a trebuchet queued. Only one though. Oh well. And stone walls here from purple. Grey did already run away. He's trying to rebuild, not throwing the match away yet. Okay, now this is an interesting choice. Um, Blue went for Siege Onagers and Teal decided to go for Onagers, probably Siege Onagers eventually. Well, let's see what's gonna play out better here. Let's see red. Oh, we can see lots and lots of dead bodies. Grey dropped to 44 population. The ships here and the calf archers yeah, chasing down the villagers on their way to the purple base. Oh, 
And drill has been resurged. You can see how fast these uh, sea tribes are moving now. Mangudai, though, with their bones against siege, can take them out rather quickly. And, yeah, you can see two villagers here <laughs> destroying a ram, but, yeah, basically nothing left. Here is, well, two villagers, but that's it. Dark Devil keeps slinging, and we all know uh, a Viking slinger can be strong. He's trying to sneak in now with uh, his Mangudai. Probably trying to hit the trade or uh, kill the economy. But Blue will chase him. He is gaining ground though. A big win here for Teal. See all the dead uh, corpses there. And Siege on the upgrade has been researched for CSR. Okay, and there's the GG. Red starting to knock on Purple's door and Teal gaining ground against Blue. That is very clear now. 12,500 score for ROR and 7,200 score in the end for Clue. Let's take a look at the achievements. It could be interesting. Tell us more about the game. The sling, maybe. 27,000 sling from Dark Devil and Winds was slinging 20,000, so a stronger sling from Dark Devil there in green. But yeah, as I said in the beginning though, the move with the scouts and the transport ship was really, really nice. It hurt blue a lot, it hurt grey a lot, and I think that decided the game eventually. Okay, let's go back. 